Hi, I'm Jodie, I'm an art therapist and I work with the Art for Wellbeing team at Cartwheel Arts. Today I'm going to introduce the Art for Induction resource to you. I'll run through how the resource came about, what it includes and how to use it, as well as providing a few handy tips on facilitation and preparation. After watching this short video, I hope you'll feel a little more confident about using this resource in your school. Usually we would provide face-to-face -face training with a more interactive experience, but because this is not possible at the moment, we are making this video to support you and your pupils to be able to access these activities. Everything I'm going to talk about today is within your teacher's guide. So don't worry about having to make too many notes. You can just jot down anything really important or relevant to you and any questions you have if they are not answered within this video. If you have any questions at the end of the video that haven't been answered, please direct them to the school improvement team. You can also pause the video anytime to take comfort breaks or make notes. So if you have everything you need, then let's get started. Art for Induction is a creative, activity-based resource for schools. It's designed for newly arrived children as part of a wider approach to transition, to provide daily activity during their first two weeks of school. The main goal is to allow the child to switch off from the pressures of school and potentially learning a new language, to reduce anxiety and help them relax. The resource can help to build self-worth and a sense of achievement. It's offered as a counterpart to the academic focus of the rest of their day. The resource has been commissioned by the Equalities team at Rochdale Borough Council and developed by the Art for Wellbeing team at Cartwheel Arts. Both teams have worked collaboratively to research and test this resource thoroughly to ensure your students receive a meaningful experience. Research shows that whether a child has arrived from mainland Europe or as a refugee who is seeking asylum, there are common themes that these children struggle with, such as finding new friends, learning a new language, dealing with loss and loneliness, anxiety in school from being overloaded with new experiences, Adjusting to a new teacher and new school system. Some children may never have been to school before. Adjusting to a new cultural environment. Trauma that may have occurred preceding, during and after migration. Racism or anti-immigration sentiments. Lots of these experiences will also overlap with experiences young people will have had during the pandemic. So this resource may be useful to lots of your pupils when returning to school. The activities are kept within the here and now, focusing on the senses to enhance your pupils experience at school. The activities are flexible in terms of how much time you spend on them, whether you work one to one, in pairs or in a group and dependent on the child's level of experience or understanding. We have designed 32 activities and to help you work out which ones might be the most useful, we've used categories, skill level and identified whether it can be delivered to a group. Here's an example. This activity is from the Let's Play category, which is based around play and enjoyment. It's level two activity, which means it requires some communication or demonstration. It can also be delivered in a group setting as well as one-to-one. -one. There are four categories in total, so I'll show you examples of the other three to give you a clear idea of what the pack contains. My special name activity. This activity is in the About Me category. These focus on the child in a positive way. They either reflect on positive qualities to boost self-worth or celebrate aspects about themselves. In this case, their name. This activity is a level one, which means it's low intensity and easy to demonstrate with language barriers. 
it can be done in a group. Light play activity. This is a clear your mind activity. These are based around mindfulness, which is the practice of noticing your surroundings and staying in the present, helping the child to relax and focus. This activity is a level two again, so needs some communication or demonstration. Weaving activity. Finally, the look at this category focuses on using the child's senses. The activities are a little more intricate and aim to distract through tactile experiences. Weaving is a level three, which indicates that it is more intricate for children with some experience of art making. We identified ones we think will be easiest to do in a group, but if you feel confident, any of them can be done in a group. There are eight activities within each category, adding up to 32 for you to choose from. These category levels and group options should help you to match the right activity to the child you're working with. Now let's have a look at the full card and go over some of the other helpful features. The images used on each activity are simply an example of what the child might create, not necessarily an aim, but it should give you an idea of where you are heading. The overview is a short description that is aimed at the child. The keywords may be useful for any students who may have limited English. At this point, I'd just like to make you aware that this resource has also been translated for the student's benefit. If you have access to a magic pen and the sound card, then you can use this to translate the category the overview and the keywords provided on each activity. This training doesn't cover the use of this pen, but there are more notes in section eight of the teacher's guide. So that's the first page of the activity card. And if we look at the second page, you will find more in-depth instructions, alterations if needed for a group and a materials list. design the activity cards to provide you with as much support as possible. Once you've chosen the activity you want to deliver, give it a thorough read through and decide if you will be delivering to a group or one-to-one. -one. The next step to think about is where the activity will be delivered. If possible using a separate room would be ideal but we appreciate that the space will be limited and even more so with any additional social distancing restrictions you may have implemented at your school. The activities can be done efficiently whilst others are around and some activities can even be done in a group where necessary. Ideally the sessions would take place in the same place each time for consistency which can also help reduce anxiety. But please feel free to adapt this to the resources that you have available. It's worth thinking about what will happen to the work after they have completed the activity. Will they take it home or will you get a folder ready with their name on to store at the school until they finish their work with you? It can also be good to make up a box of materials and label it clearly for use with the resource. We've also created some single templates and prompt sheets to support you and the child further still. Here you will find an I am list and an I like list to support positive self-reflection. These have been translated using the magic pen. There are further instructions for the curly paper activity, examples of patterns and marks for colouring in interesting ways, and then templates to simply print off and colour in. These activities with templates have a note to prompt you in the teacher's instructions section. We have designed the pack so that the materials are easily accessible some materials you will already have access to in your school, others you will need to purchase. We have written a list of the materials you'll need, as well as an idea of cost in the teacher's guide. 
We have broken them down into items you should be able to access at the school, recycled items that could be collected at home, items that need to be purchased, what we have called extra items that are there to enhance the experience such as using clear PVA instead of white PVA for the wet glue painting activity. The way we advise you to use the list is to look through the items you have you may need to buy or collect first and this will indicate which activities may need a little more planning. For example, looking at the must buy list we can see that activity 17 keeps cropping up. As this activity needs a few different materials it may be worth planning to do this activity later so that you have time to get the materials ready. Another way of looking at this may be to try and gather materials that are used in lots of activities such as coloured white or black card has a long list of activities attached to it so it may be worth sourcing some cards straight away so that you are ready for those activities. You can also simply work your way through the activity cards and make a note of the ones you have materials for straight away. When it comes to facilitating the activities, some things I often try to do. Be prepared, read through the activity and run through it in your head before starting. Make sure you have all the materials handy before you start. Non-judgmental. This isn't about making good art, it's about having a positive experience of art making. Try not to judge the quality of the work, help the child to focus on the process. Learn along with the child. Don't worry if you don't know everything. Play and experiment. There's no right or wrong answer when making art. Take time to explain the activity. It will often take a little longer than usual for the child to process instructions in another language, so give the child more time to think about what you are saying or asking them to do before moving on to the next step. Celebrate the completion of each activity with positive effort-based praise, valuing process as much as the outcome. Be mindful of trauma. Sometimes traumatic experiences can surface through art making. Be compassionate and use this as an opportunity for signposting if needed. It's recommended that the child or group is supervised throughout the activity. We recommend starting with the Clear Your Mind category or a level one all about me activity such as I am Great Jar or My Special Name. You will know your pupils and be able to identify if an activity might be difficult or cause stress. If this is the case, then you can leave these activities until the child feels more confident or you can provide them with a cho choice of two or three for the following days and let them decide what they are ready for. If the child is really struggling and doesn't find the time relaxing, this might be a good point for signposting if needed or use the I like list to find out more about their interests. It can be useful to let your pupils know at the beginning how many sessions they will have and provide gentle reminders when nearing the end. If you've been collecting the artwork as you go along, you could use the last session to celebrate the work created and reflect on it. Or you could provide a simple certificate to acknowledge the ending in a positive way. And that brings us to the end of this training video. I hope you found it useful and that you enjoy using the Art for Induction resource in your school. We're always keen to see pictures of work created and hear feedback, so please feel free to send these to admin at cartwheelarts.org.uk. We've also made a lot of these activities into follow along videos, which you can find on our YouTube channel. Good luck on your art making journey and thanks for watching.